cart before the horse. Does tinnitus cause hearing loss or does hearing loss cause tinnitus? Right, how many in the audience, audience here strongly focus on the tinnitus on a daily basis? Show of hands, please. Quite a few. How many have a hearing loss? Roughly about the same amount, surprisingly enough. Yeah? So, what is tinnitus? Symptom of a bodily malfunction. I'm going to come over here, it's probably easier. It can be subjective, as you heard, Emer, if you were in an Emer stock, subjective or objective. Subjective, heard only by the individual in the head. Objective, heard by anybody else outside. It's a mechanical problem. It's where you maybe have a clicking sound or uh, blood pulsing through your head that you can hear and it sounds like tinnitus. So, then further, subjective tinnitus being the most common, it's then separated into otic and somatic. Otic in the inner ear and the acoustic nerve. Somatic disorder outside the ear and the nerve, but still within the head itself. Tinnitus can be heard in the left ear, the right ear, centrally, or it can be heard as though it's coming from outside the head altogether. Anybody here got that problem? Where they can hear it come from outside the head? It's a very rare one. Anyway, if you look here, almost all cases there's a degree of hearing loss, and we see it in this room. 93% in one research article, 93% were found to have a hearing loss, and 60% of those needed hearing aids. The ones that didn't need a hearing aid were either not ready for hearing aids, or they didn't have a sufficient hearing loss to warrant one. So what I do when I'm testing, normal standard testing is carried out between 250 hertz and 8,000 hertz. But what happens if you've got hearing loss that's below 250 hertz or above 8,000? What happens if it's in the middle between, um, for instance, 3,000 and 4,000 hertz? We don't test, we test on each frequency. Anybody that's heard of these gnats, you know, the, the little machines that the shop owners were putting outside the shops, adolescents have the ability to hear sounds that are way above 8,000. And these little gnats were giving off the nastiest of tunes above 8,000. And of course, the adolescents quickly moved on because it was like playing the Cliff Richard music. No stay. So, um, cases of tinnitus without hearing loss is very rare. However, people with hearing loss don't always get tinnitus. 60% um, of the hearing aid wearers, people who started wearing hearing aids when their tinnitus and their hearing loss was, was discovered, they got relief almost instantaneous. So we'll go and find out why. This is a typical audiogram. You'll all have been acquainted with this if you've had your hearing tested. It's a standard, the BSA standard guideline for hearing aid and for audiometer. 125 up to 8,000, and then we've got down decibels, turning the decibel, the volume up from zero down to 140. Now, hearing loss can interfere with the ability to, to decipher what is a startle sound. This is really important, startle sound. And in effect, all the sounds may appear as warnings, which feeds the limbic system. Has anybody here heard of the limbic system before? Ah, this is the part that deals with all your emotions, situated in your head, roughly in from there, and it's made up of various different parts, which we'll come to later. Right, so the limbic system, because it deals with emotions, you have a problem deciphering what's a startled sound, you end up stressed out. Anxious and stressed out because you can imagine every sound, oh, every sound, and eventually you're really tense. It could also be hypothesized that the brain is so busy trying to get this information, the sounds that have been reduced into the head, that to be able to decipher it, that the brain is on red alert trying to work out what sounds are coming in. And that can lead to this thing called 
um, hyperacusis. We're not actually there. Hypersensitivity, hyperacusis overamplifies all the various frequencies that are okay, but misses the frequencies that are not okay, and it means that you're way above the amplification levels you need. In other words, every sound is incredibly loud. Normal sounds are so loud that they appear like normal hearing people uh, as if they were very loud. Loud sounds to somebody with hyperacusis is painful. Anybody got hyperacusis here? You know what I'm talking about. I have to keep my voice down a bit. Anyway, hearing aids might be viewed as a gestalt therapy because what happens when you put the hearing aids in? It focuses all the attention away from the tinnitus and you, your brain then starts to hear the sounds as they should be heard again. It's been, been defined as an auditory phantom sensation, ringing in the ears, but it doesn't have to be ringing. It can be like crickets singing, it can be like machines going, it can be any sound, including the sound of music, as if there was music playing in the distance, and also speech. Some people hear it as speech, which is really sad because in the past, when they heard it as speech, some people have actually been incarcerated because it was assumed that it was schizophrenia and it was actual tinnitus. Anyway, um, as you can see, tinnitus affects the limbic and autonomic nervous system and that's the part that controls the bodily functions and can trigger flight, fight or freeze. If you're constantly listening to every sound like this and a loud sound comes in that you do hear, then obviously Flight, flight, or freeze. Everybody's aware of the fight, flight, or freeze syndrome? Yes? Where if you get a fright, you've got three ways of going. You either flight, take off, or you fight. And I have seen this worked. Somebody who was given a fright and they automatically just punch out. <laughs> or the other one, freeze. And that's what a lot of people do when they get a fright, they freeze. So this is all coming from tinnitus and the limbic system, it's causing your heightened emotions. So the annoyance of tinnitus is determined exclusively by the limbic and the autonomic system. Am I getting too technical? It's alright, it gets easier, I promise you. <laughs> so, this phantom end aspect to tinnitus and phantom pain, um, as in, you know when you get your leg cut off? People still feel the legs there and they still feel the pain and they still feel that they could itch it. Well, tinnitus affects the same part of the brain. It activates the same part of the brain. MRI scans have shown this. So that could point to tinnitus is actually chronic pain. So it's chronic pain. How many people have got chronic pain of some sort or have suffered it in the past? It's extremely difficult to get rid of. So tinnitus is a chronic pain, then obviously it's the pain signal that alerts the brain to the fact that there's damage to the oral system. Normal hearing, tinnitus free subject, the ever present ambient background is deeply rooted in our sense of security and connection with life around us. Does that make sense to folk? When there's ambient noise, normal background noise, you feel comfortable. If you're completely shut off to any noises, then you're in a heightened state of alarm because you can't hear normal sounds. That's why we've got a little caveman coming along whistling in Mary Jo and he hasn't heard the dirty great dinosaur who's ready to do battle with him. Um, that's why your startled sounds are so important. If you can't decipher between them, then you could end up in a situation like this. Fortunately, dinosaurs are dead. <laughs> so you remove this and will experience depression, insecurity and a terrible feeling of loss. If we were able to ex perceive an extraneous sound as background noise, we would instinctively block it out as unimportant. Because our sound levels have gone down, our hearing's gone down, it means that any sound that comes in, our brain can actually recognise it as 
ambient noise. Malfunction in the oral system, it would be more difficult to define the sound, so that this sound then demands our full attention, creating stress and fatigue over time. Our senses, smell, taste, hearing, sight, touch, all connected to the limbic system. Hence the positive emotional reaction. We've all, heard, we've all done this. You hear a beautiful piece of music and you feel, oh, that is wonderful. Touch a soft fabric. You can almost touch that right now. Fantastic soft feeling. Or you see a beautiful painting. That's all fed into our limbic system. The limbic system allows us to have all these emotions. But also, negative reactions come from the same place. Anybody with tinnitus should now be thinking, ah, there's a correlation here. This is the limbic system. It's made up of all the various parts. parts. The amygdala, olfactory, there's an interesting one. You see, the thalamus has uh, auditory, visual, and somatosensory signals. The olfactory is from the same area. We've got emotions, controls and regulates the emotions. All these different parts all play into this business with emotions. Phantom sensation akin to chronic pain, almost always found in auditory malfunction of some sort, causes emotional turmoil, stress, tension, etc. And it's a sound, therefore it has to do with the oral system. It is a symptom, it's a symptom, not a cause of hearing loss, or is it? Right, recognise precipitators. We've already covered this this morning to an extent. Oh, sorry, beg your pardon. Sudden deafness, <coughs> um, noise exposure, which is the main one. Many years, hearing loss, certain medications, autotoxic drugs, zap the ears and you get tinnitus. Autosclerosis, tumour, infection, earwax, we could go on and on and on. I could fill the rest of this, these slides with the amount of different um, problems giving you tinnitus. And then you've got the objective one. Sounds heard from a mechanical source, high blood pressure, ticking jawbone. These are all things that are mechanical and can be fixed, usually. Common theme though, damage to or malfunction of the oral processing system. So we've got damage to the oral system, we've got the limbic system, we've got emotions kicking around. Here's the emotional effect, stress, tension, fatigue, insecurity, depression, problems concentrating, anger. Added to that, problems sleeping. Most people complain when they're waking up in the middle of the night and there's all this lack of noise and the tinnitus is sizzling. Would it be correct? That's a bad time. That's, that's caused by the tinnitus, by the stress. It adds to the stress. So you note there are no positive feelings here whatsoever. This list has no positive feelings. And tinnitus sufferers tend to be very much non-positive people because they've got tinnitus. So when do you focus most on your tinnitus? We've already discovered night time, during the night when it's quiet. <coughs> Anybody else got any uh, hypothesis on when uh, they focus most on their tinnitus? When I'm reading. When you're reading, yeah. and again, everything's yeah. quiet. Yeah. yeah. Do you focus on it all the time, 24 hours a day? When I try not to. Correct. In this room, all the people with tinnitus, without exception, I can say that you, when you concentrate on something that you really enjoy, something that gives you a lot of pleasure, forget the tinnitus is there. Would it be correct? Yeah. So. Do you see how there is, there is a way around all this tinnitus problem? You, when you're busy doing something you enjoy, it disappears. It gets kicked into touch. If you could do something that you enjoy doing all the time, then you wouldn't have any need for the tinnitus. You see, you notice times when it's less important. <coughs> so here we go. You get an oral malfunction. That means a problem somewhere in the oral system all the way through to the limbic system. Tinnitus, oh, my little arrows have disappeared. Tinnitus focus leads to increased stress levels. The more you focus, the greater the stress, and the greater the stress, the more you focus. 
the more stressed you are, the more importance you give to your tinnitus. And your tinnitus then begins to interfere with your ability to concentrate and to hear. Your hearing automatically gets compromised because of it, but not because you've got hearing loss, not because of the, the fact that the tinnitus is causing the hearing loss, it's because it's very difficult to hear above the sound of this annoying buzz in your ear. Your concentration levels are down, so you miss important facts, important speech, because your tinnitus is so loud. The answer is, break the cycle. Easy, isn't it? <laughs> yes, that is a very cynical yes. So, you already know by refocusing to a more enjoyable pursuit, the tinnitus loses its impact. There's various products, therapies and techniques now available. Emer went through a few of them. To train you to focus on something, anything but your tinnitus. Preparing the malfunction to the oral system, for example by using hearing aids, does not always remove the focus from the tinnitus. Why? If you cut your finger, blood everywhere, and you think, oh, put plaster on it. You put the plaster on, and that plaster will stop the blood coming out. But the brain knows that there's still a damage to the skin. The skin's open. It needs repaired. And all the nerve endings are damaged. It knows the damage is still there. So when you put that sticking plaster on, does that get rid of the pain? No. Because the brain's fully aware that the damage is still existing. So what you have to do is, you have to wait until the brain's fixed that repaired the, the malfunction part of the body before the pain disappears. Yeah? So the chronic pain of tinnitus doesn't disappear necessarily when you put hearing aid in. Because the brain's still fully aware there's a malfunction there. <coughs> so the result of that pain and the feelings attached to it linger on. So overriding is the need to reduce stress levels, learn to relax, laugh more, do more of what makes you feel good, and change the negativity surrounding your tinnitus to a positivity, which is what you do when you, you do something you really enjoy. Cause and effect, does tinnitus cause hearing loss? Answer to that is no other than the noise being so loud and distracting. How can a symptom cause a malfunction anyway? It's the malfunction that causes, produces the symptoms. In other words, the horse goes before the cart. Now, this is an example of an exercise that I would like to do right here and now to show you just how easy it is to relax. This is not hypnotherapy, this is just pure and simple guided imagery to help you get over the fact that I've been talking about nothing but tinnitus for the last little while and people with tinnitus know that the more you talk about it, the louder it gets. So if you'd all like to take part in this, just to show you how simple it is for you to take back control, I'd like you all to sit comfortably here, just sit comfortably in your chairs and then close your eyes and just take a little trip with me. Imagine Close your eyes then. That's it. All the extraneous sounds, all the sounds outside are about to disappear into the background. They're not of any importance to us sitting here. Imagine it's a beautiful hot summer's day. You're lying outside on warm soft grass. Feel the grass between your fingers. You have nothing to do right now. Relax. The sun is shining. It's beating down and it's warming you up. And all the sounds are disappearing further and further into the background. You can almost smell the heat from the sun. The sky is the most beautiful colour of blue with only the old wispy high cloud floating by. You hear the twittering of chirpy little birds all in the distance. You feel comfortable, warm, and totally at peace. Beautifully relaxed. Oh. 
Hey now, open your eyes. Did that feel good? You can do that with yourself. Anytime, anywhere you are, reading a book, you can take time out and get yourself an image. Because as soon as you start looking at images, images that give you a good feeling, then you, who needs tinnitus? There we go. <laughs> That's what you're aiming for. <laughs> Change the changeable, accept the unchangeable, and remove yourself from the unex unacceptable. Tinnitus being the unacceptable. Now, two books I would recommend to anybody. Extremely good, they give it as it is, all the way through absolutely everything that you could ever wish to know about tinnitus, right up to the very latest um, treatments out there. These two, fantastic. They're very up to date. They were, in fact, the last one. This one, multiple disciplinary approach, was printed last year. 